everyone. Hope you are all doing well. Welcome to another Mando Lessons Live. My name is Baron Collins Hill. Catch up with the chat here. It seems like the video last week, or last time I did this, three weeks ago now, was a little choppy. I've been talking to the people who make the software that I'm using, and it's still a little choppy. Um, so hopefully we'll get that sorted by next week, but we'll see. Hope I'm coming through loud and clear. I'm actually using different cameras, so if anything, except for the choppiness, which I know about, seems off, let me know. I'll see if I can fix it on the fly. If not, uh, there you go. I've now got a little bit of autofocus, so I can go like this. And let's focus right, how fancy is that? Focus right in on the instrument. All right, let's see, who do we got? We got Lindsay, we got Sheldon, Woody, Uncle Bobby, Jim, Peter, and Andy, Joe, did I say Joe? Nope, already forgetting, not enough coffee here. Betsy, Ant-Man, Alan, James, Ian, Neil, Dan, Jane, Robert, Heidi. Great to see you all. Welcome. If this is your first time, let me know. Join in in the chat and uh, meet all these great folks that are here. Brianne as well and Dan. <coughs> Amazing. So great to see you all. Happy New Year. Yeah, I haven't posted anything since it's been a new year, so... Happy New Year to you all. Hope it's off to a, as good a start as it can be. And yeah, um, the way these work, if you've never been to one, is it's an hour of Q&A. So uh, throw the questions out there. No question too simple. No question too advanced. And we'll have a good time. Happy to take requests for traditional tunes. The tune this week is Whiskey Before Breakfast. So we're going to play that tune at the end. A classic. Um, and yeah, we'll just jump in and have a good time. I'll look back through and see... See if there's anything in the the words of the chat rather than just the names this time. Flip them all over. Glad to see it. Oh, it's right. It wasn't. It's not supposed to be uh, whiskey before breakfast. Maybe that was last week, and I didn't catch up. It's supposed to be the eighth of January, so I gotta play that one, and that's what we'll be playing at the end because it is the eighth of January. So I'll play that tune, and then. That's the tune we'll be playing at the end of the hour. Aunt Matt says, jealous of all you California folks, northeast is cold and wet. Yeah, it's not as cold up in the Pacific Northwest, but it is wet. It has been raining hard for the last, like, week. Today's supposed to be the first day of sun in quite some time, and you get a fur further north of us up into Washington, and it's been snowing like mad, too. And, and east. Or, sorry, yeah. East. All my directions are confused out here. Uh, seems like out near Mount Hood, people are, there's like 140 inches of snow in some places or something crazy like that. Um, so I hope you all are enjoying whatever weather you have to the best of your ability. Loud and clear. Glad to hear it. It seems like things are working. <laughs> looking very focused today. <laughs> I do get it. Except I, I need more coffee to really focus myself. I think maybe what... So yeah, okay, so... Betsy said, The tune is whiskey, but today is the 8th. Some should play it now. I think what happened was I said whiskey before breakfast at the end of the last stream. And... Like, as I was shutting everything down, I c can still see the comments go by. And I think maybe James or somebody said 8th of January. And I was like, oh, of course. So I actually, like, went from my off screen. I can do this. Where it looks like I've disappeared. And uh, then I came back and was like, 8th of January, of course. Let's do 8th of January. Um, so probably a lot of people had left at that point. So... It was a retroactive 8th of January switch. Awesome. Heidi says, I've downloaded most of your sheet music and made a little book out of it. Already learning a few tunes. Awesome. I wonder if I should do that. That'd be a good idea. The sunny central coast of California. Welcome, Ed. Good to see you. Glad the cameras are looking nice, Joe. Yeah, I spent the last three weeks getting new cameras and lenses and... Trying to make them all work and do the things that my other ones couldn't. Just working on the lighting in here. And yeah. 
gave me something to do over the holidays. As if there wasn't already enough. <laughs> Alright, so I'll play a little bit of uh, 8th of January. It's also, the, you might recognize the tune, it's also the Battle of New Orleans. The tune, the 8th of January, is a very old tune. Um, but that tune got co-opted into the Battle of New Orleans song. 1813 took a little trip. No, that's not it. That's a crazy, oh, what is that? That's something else that's good. Uh, January. I'm glad you're a good sport about it, Alan. I knew I could count on you. Uh, yeah, so there we go, a little 8th of January in the key of D. There was a question on the key. Um, yeah, and the, another good question from Heidi. Nope, not Heidi. Uh, that was the sheet music collection. Uh, where was it? Neil says, there always seems to be different versions of these tunes. I guess it's pick which one you like best or mix and match. Yeah, it's sort of, I end up learning the version that I hear the most. You know, I usually go to a session, normal times I'd go to a session and hear a bunch of people playing and be like, hey, I like that tune, and then try to try to pick it up or make a little recording of it and then go home and learn it from that. Because um, everybody does play it a little different. And, you know, the way that they play Whiskey Before Breakfast out here is going to be a little different than the way I learned it in Maine, and I usually just try to adapt to whatever I'm hearing, even if it's just kind of on the fly, like, oh, I'm hearing that I, I know this certain little phrase, but they're actually doing just something slightly different. I'll try to, on the fly, just kind of join in with whatever's going on <coughs> around me. And then, yeah, you, and also just kind of like pick what you like, um, and you'll have fun with it. see and then yeah there are also another kind of going down that that line of thought again you can just learn like different versions of the same tune you know like okay here's a Clyde Davenport's version and here's Bruce Molsky's version and here's my version and everybody does it a little different it also can be fun to learn multiple people's different version of the tune it's hard to keep them all in your head though <laughs> Nice. Heidi says, uh, working on Angeline the Baker, Flop Eared Mule, and Cold Frosty Morning are the ones you've learned, but not by ear. Yeah, it did. I, I started out, you know, using a lot of sheet music, um, but anything you can do to just keep practicing, you know, a, a good exercise that I recommend people do is, like, go through the lesson, um, or some amount of the lesson, as if you were going to learn it by ear, even if, you know, that's something that you're still working on. And even if you only get, like, a phrase or two out of the lesson before you're, you kind of, like, hit your, your learning by ear wall, just doing that little bit, you know, learning by ear doesn't mean, like, sitting down and learning an entire tune in one sitting. 
Um, it can really be like, oh, I learned a phrase here. Oh, I learned a phrase there. And then maybe I went and looked at the sheet music, if that's something you're more familiar with. Um, but anything you can do to just put in a little bit of time, you know, it's, it's just like learning to talk or read or write. You know, you just got to put in the time, um, trying the thing. And it's not going to work all the time, but the more you try, magically the better you get. Nice, Arsenal. It's good to have you here. Ah, Arsenal says, have you tried out a carbon fiber mandolin? If so, what are your opinion on them? I've tried a couple, not in many years. The most recent one I played, I don't even remember who made it. Maybe it was a mix or a new med is also the name. Um, new Millennium Acoustic Design. There have been a, a handful of carbon fiber mandolins makers that have popped up over the years they're surprised like they're surprisingly good they're often not they're not cheap they're usually you know like several thousand dollars three four five um because they're very kind of custom shop uh boutique things um but they're they're pretty good I, i've never found one that i'm like hey this sounds as good, it is interesting, like, as good as, like, a high-end wooden instrument. But it's also, I think, part of it is that carbon fiber isn't wood, and we think, like, wood is the way instruments should sound. And carbon fiber instruments have tonal characteristics that are different from wood. So it's not necessarily a, like, wood sounds better than carbon fiber, and carbon fiber will never sound as good as wood. They're just different. Um, and they certainly have their pros, you know, you can throw, you don't even need a case for them, really, they're so, uh, sturdy. There's some, there's often talk on Mandolin Cafe about carbon fiber stuff. Are you going to have more fiddle tune lessons this year? That is the plan. I am excited to jump back into teaching some tunes. Brian says, I think the variations on a tune are due to history before recordings. Definitely. Uh, they s spread like a game of telephone. Look at Eliza, uh, Eliza Jane in Bluegrass and then in New Orleans. Yeah, you, you definitely do get some kind of classic melodies that they stick around because they're good, but there's, n n and like people learn them, but there's no, you know, people weren't writing them down. People weren't recording them, it's, you know. E even when you could write stuff down, a lot of the folk tradition is not written down. It's all kind of oral tradition. And when you can um you couldn't record anything until the early 19th century and then even then a lot of folk music didn't get recorded so it's it's very you know it is a it is one big game of telephone which is why i don't worry too much about what the like right way to play a tune is RYC62 says, starting point, I also get brain freeze at the start of loads of songs. How do you go through your large mental library to stay st to uh, straight, straight away? Um, I think I know what you're saying there. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, generally, I just, like, I don't. <laughs> like, when I, when I started playing, I said, uh, 8th of January, and I played... Because, like, my muscle memory and my brain library got mixed up. Um, so that was a Durang's hornpipe. Um, so, yeah, you're going to you're gonna mix tunes up. You're going to forget tunes. It's all part of it. I've seen some real big name people playing on big stages and just, like, totally have a brain fart and, like, couldn't remember the name. Couldn't remember how to play the tune. And we're just like, whoops. Oh, well. <laughs> just, like, stop. And, you know, it really it does happen to everyone. I think the more... The more time you play, the more times you make those mistakes, you get more comfortable with them. And I think worrying about, oh, can I remember how this tune goes, is only going to add, like, stress and is only going to increase the chances that you may not learn, you may not be able to kind of recall the tune. So getting used to just being like, oh, yeah, I can't remember that right now. I mean, most of the stuff here, you know, when people request a tune, I would say half the time I say, like, oh, yeah, I know that tune, but I can't start it or... I used to play that tune, or, yeah, I know that tune, and I know I can play it, I just can't quite find it, or I get the parts mixed up. Sometimes I'll play a tune, 
and get all the way through it and then be like, oh, you know, that wasn't actually the tune I thought I was playing. It's all part of the fun. It's all, um, all part of the, the, the folk process. Can you shift your pick grip while still playing? Yeah, so in general, my sort of thought, this is fun, I haven't been able to do this uh, uh, autofocus before, but now I can really show you a little closer. Um, so in general, my hand's kind of like a kind of opening, like a door handle or a doorknob. Um, the pick goes in like that. Um, so generally my pick looks like that, but if you were to watch my hand um, as I play, I'm doing a lot of this over time. The pick is loose in my hand and I'm always making, this is really overemphasized, but I'm always making these tiny little adjustments. So like as I'm playing, let's see here if I can get a good view on the, you know, I'm always doing like, it's not really showing up, but I'm, I am always doing these tiny little adjustments with my pick just to kind of keep it in line. I think of it as like driving down the interstate in a car, you know, if you lock in, you like even if the road is super straight, you lock in, you're gonna slowly drift. And if you don't make little corrections, it's gonna need to be like, whoa, you're gonna have to really turn the wheel. But as you drive, you get familiar with just like, oh, it's just a tiny little move this way, so I'm not gonna have to make a large adjustment later. And it just feels natural and it feels like you're going straight down the interstate. But really it's a collection of tiny little micro adjustments. What does the banjolin sound like, and is it worth it to buy, uh, is it worth it to buy if I were to buy one? They're fun. I've got one. I don't have it out right now. Um, they're, they're a very cool sound. Um, you don't hear them a whole lot. You can, like, if you look up banjolin on YouTube, you can find people playing them. Um, and I think I've got a video where I kind of play banjolin and bullback mandolin and f-hole mandolin and oval hole mandolin and flat instruments like flat top instruments where i just have a, a bunch of different uh instruments to play around with i don't personally find a whole lot of like use for them myself it's a cool sound um especially in kind of some of the like raggy old time world uh it's it's a fun sound um, the problem with them is it's often hard to find them in good playing condition. It's like bullbacks. Like, the bullbacks are um, made so... They're so lightly built that they've just kind of fallen apart over time. Um, so they they're often require a lot of repair. But if you can find one in good condition... And I know, like, Gold Tone is making banjo mandolins. I've never played a Gold Tone. Um, I've got a... a, a <laughs> the banjo mandolin in the closet here um that i had worked on and it's already kind of starting to starting to creep back into its more broken ways they're just like there's a lot of tension on them with those strings and then you've got this hide head and then the the neck has to be attached to the dowel it's just it's not a very modern idea I'm, i'd be curious to see like a modern built banjo mandolin and what that would look like Sometimes you can also find them cheap, though. Oh, cool. Mary Spender's got a carbon fiber guitar video out. I owned a car little carbon fiber guitar for a while that I loved. Um, who made that? Car uh, it was CA, Composite Acoustics, I think. Made, made this little guitar. I don't know if they make them anymore. Um, it's called the Cargo. So it's like the CA Cargo guitar. And it's this little short 23 inch scale kind of three quarter size or seven eighth size guitar very fun and they sound they sounded pretty good i think guitars have the uh, at this point probably because there's just been more work with carbon fiber in guitars and maybe the fact that they're bigger and they can be a little more resonant even with carbon fiber i think guitars often can sound a little closer to wood guitars than carbon fiber mandolins to wood mandolins see some more simple to complex cool yeah i'm definitely going to do more of those especially as i make more tune lessons i'll have more 
uh, simple to complexes to make. Road to Lisdune Varna. I'll add that to the list. Yeah, that'd be a good one to do. With with the Irish ones, I'm always a little at, at, at a loss because I don't do as much um, ornamentation with Irish tunes. I don't do as much like double stops and slides and things like that. I'll add a triplet here and there, but for the most part, I just keep Irish tunes as a, a simple melody. You can work on things like kind of adding some swing and groove to it and you know a triplet here and there um, and just kind of getting it up to speed and mostly focusing on the the kind of groove of the tune but I should do more of those James has been looking for a carbon fiber fiddle yeah I'm sure that's a small world as well oh interesting carbon fiber body with a wooden neck Nice. I'm glad the uh, Simple to Complex is helping you out there, Aunt Matt. Rupert says, The guy I play with here in England has a handy sheet of two-bar starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a lot of common tunes. My bandmate in Maine, Julia, has this little, like, kind of journal notebook that's, like, only, like, this big. Um, and it's just got the name of the tune. And she um, uses this notation called ABC, which you may be familiar with. You often see it if you look at like the session.org. Um, you can see um, a lot of that stuff. It's sort of like a, a good way for tunes to be written out in like a digital platform for a while. Um, so she writes out the first, it's, you can write really condensed because you just like write, uh, if like the tune is uh, Jamie Allen, she would write Jamie Allen and then G A B G G A B, and it's got little like measure lines in it, um, so she can just cram a bunch of tunes in and then say, "Okay, how does that tune go?" and look it up if she really needs to play a particular tune at a particular time. Do the torrified instruments provide some sort of benefit of carbon fiber? If I had a torrified instrument, I probably wouldn't take it on a canoe. <laughs> how carbon fiber gets advertised? Yeah, so torrification is also known as like kind of baking the wood um so wood loses uh moisture as it dries and gets older and torrification is a way to just kind of speed up that process um i've played a couple torrified mandolins i own the collings six string guitar i own has a a torrified sitka spruce top um and i really like the sound of torrification it's not going to be the same sort of thing um as as carbon fiber it doesn't really it's still wood at the end um and, it, and a lot of people i've heard like with working with torrified wood is really different because it's like more kind of crumbly i've never like worked with it myself so i can't back that up but i've heard people working with it and saying it really takes some time to get used to because it's it's so it's dry that it just works differently Um, but I do, I do like the sound of torrified instruments and Collings makes them like fully, fully torrified mandolins. I don't know if I've played a fully, cause it's, it's most common to have like the, the spruce top torrified, but Collings will do, you know, the whole thing, top, back, sides. Um, in the electric guitar world, a lot of people do like roasted necks. And I think that's maybe more of like a, a weight relief or adjustment thing, but those are cool too. Nice. James says he's got a torrified top mandolin on order. Yeah, I think, and I do think it is because it's kind of gotten that humidity locked out of it. It, it is a little more stable, um, but it's not going to be as indestructible like carbon fiber. So a banjo mandolin is um, a mandolin neck on a banjo head so it's got the skin head and all the metal hardware like a regular five string banjo or tenor banjo but it's just got the neck short little mandolin neck that you see on a mandolin um and they're fun but they're they're a little odd they're very strident sounding and they don't often hold up to the test of time Oh, I don't know what Erson else is talking about. Oh, there's a carbon fiber guitar with a built-in amplifier? I'll have to check out that video. 
Ooh, have I done a simple to complex? I think I've talked about this. So D Dave says, did you do a simple to complex for the Glasgow Ariel? <laughs> think I have anyway um, because I don't really do anything to that tune to make it more complex it's already extremely notey it's a very epic tune in its own right it's almost straight eighth notes and at that point if it's if a tune is full of eighth notes all the way through you can like del you could go from You got that that long note at the beginning, but you could you could eighth notify it to. But you know it's it's it it has so much movement in it already that I think anything if you start complexifying, <laughs> if you try, start trying to make it more complex, um, you're gonna start losing some of the melody of the tune pretty quick. So with tunes like Glasgow Real, and honestly, most Irish and Scottish, well, I don't play a whole lot of Scottish tunes, um, but most Irish tunes, um, I don't add as much, um, I don't try to make them more complex most of the time. I just, you know, get the, the melody down and try to kind of spend all of my excess energy trying to lock in with the people around me and really develop a good swing to the music. What do you use to clean and polish your varnished Ellis's? I have uh, a varnished Pava. How long does it take to become or become durable? My Pava is one and a half years old. So yeah, um, I don't know a whole lot about this. Uh, my understanding is varnished instruments will harden over time. I think by a year and a half in, it should be pretty, uh, pretty set the varnish should be pretty set but um i don't honestly know that much i don't do anything um i would say maybe once a year when i'm changing strings i'll like take a a cloth get it wet get as much of the water out as i can so it's just like barely damp give it a little wipe down to to get the dust off and then immediately put a dry cloth over it so no water sits on it um and some people will do like some kind of oil, like lemon oil or something on the fingerboard. I never do that myself. It may be that if my instrument is looking dried out to a, a good, an instrument tech and I bring it to them for work, they may just do that because they see it and say, oh, this neck is getting dried out. But I don't think anyone has ever put anything on the fingerboards of my instruments. So I don't, I don't really do anything. Um, I mostly, they just kind of get... I like the the look of instruments that have been played, so I don't, you know, I take, I'm careful with my instruments, but I'm, you know, I play them first and foremost, and, you know, I'm not going to do anything intentionally that's going to harm them, but I also don't uh, worry too much about little dings that happen over time. Nice, Uncle Bobby says, heard a carbon fiber cello. Squirrel Hunters, great tune. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> I totally derailed myself. Here's a rough and ready version of uh, Squirrel Hunters. Great tune, mostly from the playing of John Hartford is where he you know, popularized it. Um, and Tennessee Waltz, another beautiful tune. Neil says, I like the idea of an octave mandolin because I don't have to relearn the fretboard. Uh, mandola is a real stretch to learn. Yeah, it's, I think, you get used to it. Um, I have, I had the same experience for a while, you know, I would find, a, like, see a mandolin in the shop and pick it up and be like, oh, okay, yeah, I can, like, do my fingerings, but it's all in, coming out in a different key. I think what made me comfortable with a mandola is just kind of spending time with the instrument. Like, your fingers are going to be doing things that they already know, um... You just sort of, like, as you listen to a tune, you say, okay, that tune's in G, but I'm on a mandola, so I need to play it in C. No. <laughs> I need to play it in D, so it'll come out in G. And once you get your fingers, like, kind of getting started on a tune, it can be a little awkward, but then once you, once you kind of get into the tune and realize, like, how you, what your fingers need to be doing, a lot of that kind of man, mandolin, um muscle memory really kind of kicks in but it does take some time to get used to it and start thinking in terms of like uh transposing the instrument and kind of thinking about keys slightly differently but then once you've done that for a while it becomes a little more natural and you just say okay like this is what i need to do to play this tune in this key you have to mess around a little bit with like oh, okay that that goes too high on the mandolin to be comfortable on the mandola, so I'm going to take the whole phrase or part down an octave, things like that. You, the more you play, the more you work with, uh, you the more you get used to kind of workarounds. But yeah, octave mandolin is nice because it's there's no transposing to do. The only trade-off is the wider, um, the longer scale length and a little more work for your fingers on your left hand. Johan says, I already played some reels and jigs and Irish ballads with guitar, violin and guitar. Cool. North of the Netherlands. Very cool. Welcome. Uh, glad you're enjoying the website and keep on learning those tunes. Was working on you, uh, this is from Dave, says you were, was working on some of your lessons and looking at the part at the end where you add some double stop slides etc and trying to figure that out so yeah often when I teach a tune I'll teach what I call the skeleton of the tune which would be like uh, and then I'll play it up to speed and then I'll play it one more time at the very end of this is how I would play it for myself, kind of with a little bit of embellishment. This mandolin is creeping out of tune. And switch over to the oval hole just for a palate cleanser, rather than have you guys listen to me tune.
Um, let's see. Yes, yeah, so, and a lot of that stuff where I kind of spice up the tune, that stuff often gets covered in those simple to complex lessons. Cool. Brianne says, started learning Tam Lin after the last video. Um, husband and I decided to plug in the mandolin on Christmas Eve with his electric guitar and did it heavy metal. That's a great tune to play really kind of heavy metal. Uh, <laughs> it was an abomination. That's great. Yeah, I love... It's fun to play around with tunes in that way. Um, you should definitely do more of that. Yeah, it's, it's very epic. <laughs> Imagine a lot of distortion and epic electric guitar sounds. <laughs> Adele says, just switched from tin whistle aerosols to mandolin. Now I can learn to play Tamlin. Yeah, yeah, Tamlin is not a, not a whistle tune, really. It uh, goes too low. You might be able to f figure it out if you did it on like a low A. I don't know enough about whistles. I've seen whistle players kind of do workarounds. Although it's in, what is it, D minor? You can try it on like an A whistle or a G whistle. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, much, it's definitely a fiddle, a tune that was written on a fiddle or a mandolin. And it feels a lot better that, whoa! And then we've got this, streak of super chats coming through thank you to joe and edward and brianne for the super chats really appreciate it helps me make these live streams happen and yeah any way that people choose to support me is great there's a couple ways there's the super chat that joe and edward and brianne just figured out um there's also some links in the description if paypal's more your style or you want to join us over on patreon there's a bunch of patrons in the chat great to see all of you Lots of different ways. And uh, if you haven't already, I'm going to put in a plug. I have some exciting news coming up, and it's going to be in my newsletter. There's a link in the description if you want to sign up for my newsletter. That's probably where, you, where you'll hear about it first. It involves some private lesson slots, um, which I have not done for years, but I've got a little bit of extra time in the coming months, so I'm going to open up just a few private lesson slots. So if you want to get your best chance at getting in on those, uh, link in the description. Sign up for my newsletter, and that'll be going out either today or tomorrow, I think. <laughs> no, nice. And I'm now reading the uh, Joe said new camera payment fund. Yeah, it uh, it needs it. And <laughs> and Edward and Brienne as well adding to the camera fund. Yeah, it was a <coughs> a, a rare gear. Pra I mean, I love. I love getting gear as much as the next person, but woo, cameras got expensive since the last time I was buying them. <laughs> kind of go, going from the, the system I was on before to these definitely bumped up the price a little bit. <laughs> so I appreciate that, you guys, for the, the camera support. And Uncle Bobby jumping in there, too. Really appreciate it. Ooh, enter Sandman on the mandolin, a possibility. I, I'm sure that someone's done it. I don't know how to do that, but... I would love to hear it. Cool. James says, good uh, time to recommend a Tin Whistle channel. Cutie Pie does nice Baron-like tune tutorials. Cool. I'll have to look that up. I would love to learn to play the whistle. I've messed around on them before, and I always found it extremely awkward. But I bet if I just practiced, I would get better. <laughs> Imagine. Awesome. Dan talking about his pava. Uh, very well crafted, very sweet and toneful. Top is torrified, finish is varnish. The action is real comfortable. Yeah, I, I had a pava for just a little while. I think last year sometime. A friend of mine uh, was thinking about selling it, so I, ha I had it for a little while and decided not to sell it. But um, they're, they're great mandolins, you know. Same shop as the Ellis's. Very similar in a lot of, a lot of ways. Highly recommend checking out, checking out the pavas. Snowy with some sun peeking out in Pennsylvania. Cold frosty morning. Or Phoebe Ice. Yeah, nice tune to play right now. Play a little Phoebe Ice. I haven't thought about that tune in a while. Not a very common tune, but one of my favorites.
that's the end of the tune, right? I think. <laughs> yeah, whoa. That was weird. I got to the end and hadn't felt, felt like I didn't finish it right or something. The tune just wants to keep on going. Yeah, I love that tune. Phoebe Ice. Learned that from the the Iron Leg Boys. Uh, and at a Western North Carolina, where, or West Virginia, I think. Awesome. Billy just signed up for the newsletter. I'll also say, this is not a, well, maybe it is a plug for Patreon, but I'm also going to give patrons first crack at uh, the, the upcoming ability to do some private lesson slots. Because uh, you all are great, and I want to give you a first go. Ah, James has a great question that is a big topic for sure. I can I can blast through a couple of thoughts before we jump into playing a little 8th of January together. It says, uh, some ideas regarding backup and rhythm for Irish music. All right, I'll do a little lightning round and then uh, catch up with all the chat here and then talk about that. And then we'll get your mandolins out, get them tuned up. We'll play a little 8th of January because it is the 8th of January and it's our contractual obligation. Billy just signed up for the newsletter. Appreciate it. Edward's looking at an eight uh, an oval hole pava. Yeah, I've, I've never played an oval hole pava. I bet, I bet they're great. It's probably gonna sound like this thing, which is a win, it wins in my book. Yeah, the, the inlays they do is amazing. A good A style strap. I like these. They're super. There's nothing fancy about them. But um, they're, they're now Planet Waves. I think it used to be Daddario. Now Planet Waves. Thin leather strap. Like 10 bucks. Um, you can either attach it. If your instrument has a raised fingerboard like this, you can put the strap under there. Or you can... Some people have a strap button right there. Or you can put it underneath the strings at the headstock. Um, that's my preference. I've also just used like a shoelace sometimes if, I'm, if I need something quick. But... I would love to see what other people have too. Yeah, I mean, I, w I could definitely be converted to a different strap. I only use this because it's like the, the strap that's on my F style is now, what, oh, 22 years old? I think this one probably says Daddario, if, it, if it's even readable. No, you can't read anything on it. But I got this strap with my first mandolin, a Johnson MA100, in like 19, probably 1999 or 2000. That's when I started playing. Uh, newsletter sign up is in the description of this video. Um, there's a lot of links in there, I know, but uh, let me just make sure it's actually that. I've never actually looked video. at this. So, yeah, if you look in the description, website, donate, donate, Patreon, shirts, email newsletter right underneath shirts and merch and right above my mandolin. <laughs> it's, it, I, uh, <laughs> J.M. Fingerstyle says, haven't thought about that tune in a while, proceeds to play it perfectly. Uh, I, I, I give all credit to, uh, brute repetition and muscle memory. <laughs> There's not a lot going on up here when it comes to, like, getting a tune out. It's either, it's like, it's either gonna pop out and I have very little to do with it, <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah, but I appreciate the, the kind words. All right, so Irish backup. I'll start off by saying, generally, Irish backup is not something that is played on the mandolin. Um, if you go to an Irish session, you're most likely going to see a guitar player or a bazooki player, or maybe a guitar player and a bazooki player. Sometimes you'll see multiples, but a lot of times, uh, Irish backup is very improvisational in a lot of a lot of ways um, with voicings and some chord substitutions thrown in so as soon as you get more than one accompanist backing up an Irish session uh, you really they really got to be listening to each other um, and mandolin you know is in the same range as the fiddle so it's generally any kind of uh, backup is either gonna muddy the waters if you're playing it on mandolin or it's just gonna get like kind of lost in the 
the larger session sound. That said, if you're in a smaller session or in a, um, a, a situation where you're playing some Irish tunes with a couple friends and everybody's cool with having the mandolin do some backup, um, what I would say is check out, I have a website called tenorguitarlessons.com and I have a introduction to GDAD tuning. Um, and you can just use all of those shapes that I teach on tenor guitar and don't worry about tuning your E string down. Just don't play. It, w when I'm backing up in an Irish style, I'm usually playing two, maybe three sets of strings. You know, if I'm playing a... Uh, backing up a reel. touching the E string. Right, so it's a lot of kind of walking bass lines and really open chords where you have the root and the fifth and no third in the chord. A little bit of third just to walk it back up. You know it's all this kind of single line stuff on the G string. also have some uh, lessons on my website um, on I forget what they're called right now I think they're in the technique and fundamental section there's a, there's like a, str a strum pattern series and I have some on that kind of basic kind of stuff and pick direction um, for that kind of Irish style hope that's helpful Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know where it is on my website. Um, so the newsletter to sign up is definitely in the description. On my website, though, that's a good question. I don't know if it is on my website. I don't know if I ever even put it there. I should. Uh, that would be a smart thing for me to do, to actually advertise my newsletter on my website. That is going right on my to-do list. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out, Joe. Yeah, that's that's another good thing James uh, says. Uh, the Daryl Anger method of know the melody really well and then don't play it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of like a little counterpoint exercise. All right, so let's play a little bit of 8th of January. The way this works... Um, whoops. Too many things going on here. RYC says I have an octave mandolin with one string tuned different. Do you tune G D A D or A D A E? Both of those are options. I really like G D A D. It is a little limiting. It really kind of limits you to playing kind of open sounding stuff in G and D. Um, but then you use a capo and you get access to A and F and all those other great keys. And you still maintain that nice drony open sound. So, 8th of January, I'll play the melody, you play the chords, it's a single tune, so it goes by pretty quick, um, and I'll lead you through with your turn to play the melody, my turn to play the chords, all that sort of stuff. Awesome, RYC says GDAD, the best tuning <laughs> for large octave mandolin family instruments. Alright, uh, 8th of January... Two, let's see how does this go. I'll play the melody, you play the chords. One, two, three. B part.
the melody. play some harmony. fitting tune to play on the 8th of January. Let's see. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Let me know what should we play next week. Maybe we should do Whiskey Before Breakfast next week because we didn't do it last week. Or we didn't do it this week. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, whiskey Before Breakfast next week is the thing to do. Um, yeah. Thank you all for tuning in. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Rest of your week. Sign up for that newsletter. Thanks to all the patrons and folks who supported me here through the super chat and various donation ways really appreciate it and yeah keep on picking don't put the mandolin down just because the last stream's over if you want to play some irish music i assume it they're doing it right now uh matt and shannon heaton over on shannon heaton s-h-a-n-n-o-n-h-e-a-t-o-n -N 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 -E uh great duo um play on a slow irish session right now on youtube if you look up shannon heaton um i think you'll find them a lot of people go there after here. I hope that's uh, what you end up doing. I think I, they may not be doing one this week, but maybe they are. All right. Great to see you all. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.